As far as your famous fight against Bam Bam Bigelow, who set that up? Uh, were you at all intimidated at all, or did you think that was just going to be easy because he was a pro wrestler with with no MMA fighting experience jumping in there against you? You know, I, I came from no experience. <laughs> and look how I did. Just because of things like, you know, being athletic, being uh, more like an alpha male who attacks. So, and anytime somebody fights against you in a fight, they have a chance. So if you go out there thinking, oh, this guy's nothing, you're going to get surprised. You know, so I don't think that way. I, when I see an opponent, I look at what are the benefits of that physique. You know, that's what we learned in the first UFC is not knowing who we were going to fight. We had to size people up. We had to look at movements. We had to look at, you know, just, just little things like that, body language, to get a clue of how that, what tendencies or what capability the person would have. So Bam Bam was big. He was a big guy. There's no way I could get my arms around his waist. You know, he was not, he was, I don't want to say chubby. He was like a refrigerator, just so. And yeah, I was a little intimidated because I watched wrestling, and his reputation in wrestling is he can take hits. He's athletic. He does some some pretty pretty uh, ac acrobat acro acrobatic <laughs> acro. He does some acrobatic uh, moves for such a big guy. So I I didn't take him lightly, but I was a little bit intimidated, but. Every fight, I'm not, I don't want to say intimidated. I don't want to say nervous, but I'm aware, you know, because I'm an offensive, defensive person. So I'm aware of the potential out there. I'm going to go out there and fight them. So the, the, how you feel about them is irrelevant. You're going to get a game plan and you're going to try to stick to that game plan. And you're going to try, try to keep it as non-personal as you can. Because it, that's when you're more fluid. That's when you 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 uh, you're able to relax more and, and uh, use a lot more of your your uh, abilities than if you were just blinded by your rage or by you know too aggressive. There was a huge crowd for that one too. Were you guys the main events, or was there some other big drawing fights on that card? There was a lot some drawing names on that card, but we were the headliner fight, you know, and it was Tokyo Dome. Tokyo Dome holds, I don't know, like the Coliseum packed. And it's live, it's on live TV there as well. So that shows you at, at, at what kind of popularity that was out in Japan. Uh, that one was put on by a private uh, promoter who put up his money to promote it. And so it wasn't no organization. Uh, so some of the fights were it was pretty interesting. Some were karate fights. Some were judo fights. Some were, uh, and four of them were MMA. And I believe uh, Severn fought, Mark Hall fought, Don Fry on that. <laughs> Mark Hall fought, Don Fry on that. It was a great fight. Hickson, Hickson fought, no, no, Hickson didn't fight. It was Jack Mark on our, our, excuse me, on the Bam Bam. Yeah, so that was a good experience. Apparently, Bam Bam allegedly claimed it was a work. Is that just him trying to save face? I don't see him saying that. <laughs> he was mad after the fight when I tried to say good fight. He was try he was pissed off. If you watch the camera, you know, the Japanese film stuff afterwards, and they try to film him, he was pissed off. Get that camera out of my face. He had a knot. That knot was not no work. If you watch me hitting him, and I'm hitting him, you can hold the fence. So I'm holding the fence and I'm throwing down my blows, but I'm not just throwing them. I'm throwing them like my hips, my weight coming down. I'm landing. I'm landing those on his temple. His head's going. I mean, I, you can feel when you hit somebody and it's hitting them flush. So I was catching them flush. So anybody wants to say that was a work, watch it. <laughs> Tell me that's a work. And then uh, I got him with it. How deep that choke was. It was deep. So... And the fluidness from the fight, you, you can, yeah, you can have fake fights, but there's certain, there'll be times in it, something cheesy might give it away. You know, they also say my fight with uh, Sakuraba was a work because like I said, the one with the Bam Bam, they threw some other kind of fights in there. Uh, sh there was a couple of shoot fights, you know, just like what Shamrock did, Pancreas, that's works. Not all of them, 
but there's works in there. So, uh, you know, uh, as far as I know, at the uh, level of MMA, you know, or, or excuse me, of no hold bars, ain't that was a no hold bar fight. There was no fake one. You can't fake that. Now, if it was rules involved, you can fake it. <laughs> There's all kinds of things that can happen. So, you know, and, and Sakuraba, when I fought him, he said, no fist to the face. And, you know, I've, most of my career was in Japan. But I know the Japanese, is, they try to make the fight go a certain rhythm the whole fight. They're gearing it to a gear to keep it that same rhythm the whole fight. Now, if, if uh, I get on him to throw a punch and I can't punch his face, oh, man, he can really stall. But not if I can headbutt. So I used to always make sure that if they wanted to come up with rules, that I would have some counter that would give make it fair in certain situations like stalling. You know, in that fight, uh, South Robert did try to stall. He was on his all fours. I was on behind him. And I was going to throw. I was about to throw a punch. And right before I threw that punch, my hand opens up and I cover his mouth. That instant was the instant that I became instantly illuminated, aware. I was, I was no longer the same fighter. I now had the ability to think and, and uh, do not do things during a fight in actual, not just off reaction, off instinct. That was my first fight that uh, I was, everything came together. In your opinion, was Bam Bam tough? Bam Bam is tough, was tough. God bless his soul. You know, he could take hits. I was hitting them solid. Like I said, solid. I had the fence. I pulled myself down as I'm throwing the punch and I'm twisting my hips. So I'm coming down with a lot of just impact. And I was catching his temple. If you watch that tape, you'll hear him. My hand hit his head like a piece of meat, and you'll see his head. He's such a big guy, but his head's every time I hit him. And it was, uh, if that was a work, how was that timing so good, man? It was, we needed some special effects from Hollywood then to be a fake fight. Yeah, he was tough. Uh, just sometimes in fights, this is what makes fights that X factor. You never know what's going to happen in a fight. That's why I don't take nobody light. You could step the wrong way, get caught by a knee, fall on your butt get up, go towards the fighter, and it stopped. So that's what makes, you know, if you care about your fights or your record or who you are, that's what gives you that nervousness, that that edge that I, you know, that I feed off that edge. I ride that edge because that keeps me alert. It, 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 it lets me be aware. Like I said, I'm aware. I'm more aware and more conscious when there's a little bit of potential of, of danger there than if it was just happy-go-lucky. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.